Hello and welcome to a new game from this CCC11 qualification event. This is game 84. Leela is white and laser is black. And after d4, knight f6 and c4, we have e5, the famous or rather notorious Budapest defense where black gives up a pawn and then tries to get it back here with knight g4. Not so many draws in uh, this opening, but black doesn't do so well at the top level. Players with an aggressive style play it occasionally. Players like um, Ivanchuk, Mamedyarov, Raport, Jobava, Nigel Short. All these guys tried it sometimes with um, the occasional win by black. So here now, after knight g4, the book ends and Leela is free to choose a move. And she used to like here bishop f4 and uh, try to hang on to this pawn. For example, knight c6, attacking this now twice, knight f3, and now bishop b4 check and knight c3. Lila like to, to play here knight c3, and bishop takes, pawn takes, and queen e7, pressurizing this. She played here queen d5, and she didn't give back the pawn, and uh, eventually she won. Now, in this game, she, she went for a different approach and she played here the Adler variation with uh, knight f3. Here, Lila goes for a space advantage on the queen side with a3, b4 and so on. And she gives back this pawn, but she will also have the d5 square to, uh, to work with, additionally to the queen side space advantage. The game now continued with bishop c5 attacking this pawn on f2 forcing e3 and now this bishop is blocked in the other line with bishop f4 instead of knight f3 bishop c5 doesn't make much sense because now after um, e3 this bishop is out and is uh, defending uh, this pawn and uh, this position is just much better for white stockfish actually evaluates this at plus two so it's pretty much winning for white already but in the knight f3 line, of course, uh, bishop c5 makes a lot of sense. It forces e3 and this blocks in this bishop at least temporarily. So now the game continued with knight c6. And here laser is ready to get back the pawn. But now came a3 getting ready to expand. And in this position, GMs usually play a5 here to stop b4 but uh, laser preferred to take here on e5 and this is a move that uh, no human played before so it's a novelty and now of course lila expanded with b4 we have bishop e7 and now knight c3 already eyeing this uh, beautiful d5 square where uh, this knight dreams to get to at uh, at some point but before we have d6 bishop b2 now bishop f6 and in this position, Lila played knight d2, a move that I would never ever consider probably playing because uh, I'm rubbish. The truth is that this move breaks many of the opening rules, like uh, don't move the same piece twice in the opening and develop first and put your king into safety and so on. You know, there are principles, you know, opening principles. And this knight d2 move is... Uh, kind of breaking them but I see also some upsides to this move so maybe I shouldn't be so hard on myself let's say I'm not rubbish maybe just a still improving player so in my mind this move makes sense because it avoids the knight exchange and that means that this, this knight will stay here on c6 and maybe will get hit with b5 you see if we play here bishop e2 then after knight takes, bishop takes, this knight can go to e5, hit this bishop and also this pawn on c4, pretty much forcing bishop e2. And then what essentially happened is that white exchanged his knight on f3 for the knight on c6. And this knight on c6 could get hit with b5 and this knight on e5 could get hit with f4 at some point. So actually exchanging those knights is not beneficial to white. And that's why probably Lila avoided the exchange here with knight d2. Laser now continued with castles and we have bishop e2, g6, 
castles, normal developing moves, rook e8, queen b3, connecting the rooks. And now after bishop g7 and rook e1, since uh, this rook is now uh, ready to, to defend this pawn, maybe f4 is already in the cards, pushing this knight back. So actually here laser played knight d7 voluntarily, and this now stops f4 since uh, e3 is hanging. But we have now knight d5, and finally this knight reached his uh, dream square. We have bishop takes, queen takes, and now knight e7 challenging this knight. But since uh, the knight on e7 it blocks both the queen and the rook, Lila preferred to avoid the exchange and played knight back to c3. We have now a5, which makes sense since uh, black has a lot of pieces here in the center. And it's very unlikely that this rook will uh, will come to uh, to the center this way. So maybe opening the a file will allow this rook to get a job. And if white avoids the exchange with b5 or by taking on a5, then the c5 square becomes available and maybe this knight can jump there at some point. However, here after b5, instead of knight c5, we have h6. And now we have rook d1, knight f5 h3 and now knight g7 and bishop f3 this bishop now reached a very nice diagonal is in a very nice place to be in but he could be hit now by knight e5 i'm not sure why laser didn't hit that bishop instead he preferred to clear this diagonal so he played rook b8 and then after knight d5 he also played b6 but lila is not very impressed with this move there's a hole on c6 and she already sees a piece on that very nice pocket. We have now knight e4 and uh, Lila is threatening here to, to win an exchange with uh, knight f6. So we have rook e6 defending the square, knight f4 hitting the rook and now knight c3, knight e5. And here Lila decided to park the bishop on c6 and hit this rook again. And taking that bishop is not so great because after the knight takes here and the pawn recaptures, both of these d5 and b5 squares are available now for white. And in this position, these knights would be in pony heaven. Both of these knights could get to these very, very nice squares and attack c7. And if instead of knight takes bishop, knight takes on c4, hitting this queen, well, the queen could go to e2 attack the knight and the rook is still attacked and black would lose material so instead of uh, knight takes bishop or pawn we have rook f8 the rook moves away and now we have knight d5 one of those uh, nice squares are still available knight takes now on c4 and lila just played here queen c1 and for that pawn she has now pressure on c7 and also on the d file and uh, now the game continued with knight e5 and e4. And with the queen side nicely sorted out, Lila is now planning f4, hitting that knight and forcing it back. So Laser played here g5, but now we have f4 still opening the f file. Pawn takes, queen takes, and Lila is threatening here knight f6 check and then mate on h6. What can Laser do? Well, he played here queen g5. But this leaves c7 undefended. And now we have queen takes, pawn takes, and knight takes on c7. Laser continued with knight d6. And now we have the other knight going to d5. King h8. And now rook f6. And look at all these white pieces. Look how happy they are in, uh, in black's camp. And here in this position, Lila expected king g7 hitting this rook. And... Uh, threatening to take on c7 when uh, this knight on, on d5 would be overloaded. And here after king g7, Lila actually uh, intended to continue with knight e8 check, uh, winning an exchange, but then after bishop b7, giving up the exchange, but winning a pawn, this bishop on e8 is attacked. Bishop takes on f7, bishop takes on d5, and now after rook takes on e6, Lila was planning to give back the exchange, but in the process, she won a pawn and she also has bishop versus knight with a better position. So this is what Lila was expecting. But instead of king g7, laser played here king h7, not putting pressure on the rook. And this now allowed Lila to take on e6. 
and after bishop takes play knight c7 and she's now attacking both d6 and e6 and uh, she can win a pawn now blazer preferred to to save the bishop here but this now drops the d6 pawn and lila is a pawn up we have rook d8 going for rook exchange and after that we have bishop d5 lila is hitting both f7 c4 and also b6 we have now rook d7 defending f7 knight a8 hitting b6 for a second time and here in this position laser now decided to uh, give up the rook for two pieces with bishop takes on d5 and here now after knight takes on b6 both of these pieces are hit so bishop e6 is forced we have knight d7 and now knight takes on d7 and laser has two pieces for a rook and uh, two extra pawns uh, pretty much winning for white this uh, b pawn is very very dangerous and lila played here rook f1 intending to uh, to help this pawn advance now if the rook would go to b1 and uh, and try to push this pawn then uh, the knight could uh, block that pawn so lila is actually planning here to play rook c1 and rook c6 and help this pawn this way so here pretty much she was expecting knight b6 so that after rook c1 the knight can block the c file and uh, if now rook b1 then the knight goes back to b6 and if rook d1 trying to get in like this then knight c4 again and uh, d6 is covered d5 d7 also covered lila could still make progress with rook d8 rook b8 and uh, try to push this pawn and the knight can never take on a3 because then after b6 this pawn cannot be stopped anymore so lila was expecting pretty much knight b6 in this position but instead laser played king g6 but now the rook went to c1 and gets into c6 we have king f6 rook c6 and lila is ready to push this pawn so the knight went to b8 to attack the rook we have rook c7 and now knight back to d7 to cover b6 but now lila played rook a7 attacking the a5 pawn we have king e5 and rook takes on a5 the pawn on e4 doesn't really matter it's much more important that lila has these two connected passers here on the queen side laser didn't even take the e4 pawn but rushed with the king to the queen side to stop the pawns but now came b6 lila gives up the b6 pawn for the g5 pawn and indeed after knight takes and rook takes on g5 she would have now two outside pass pawns very outside pass pawns and uh, black couldn't uh, stop both the king would have to stop one of the pawns and uh, the bishop and the knight defend uh, try to stop the other one but uh, the knight and the bishop are no match for the rook and the king so that would be pretty much over so instead of that uh, laser went for f6 defending g5 and now we have b7 king c7 the king is around to stop these pawns we have rook b5 king b8 rook b4 now king a7 king f2 king b8 and now a4 and this a pawn is also ready to go up the ward and here laser played knight e5 and since now b6 is unguarded lila played here rook b6 attacking bishop and pawn and of course she would love to take out the f6 pawn because if the f6 pawn falls then the g5 pawn will also fall and that way harry would be freed and this is all about freeing harry so we have now bishop back attacking a4 rook takes on f6 and now king takes on b7 a5 knight d3 check king e3 knight c5 rook b6 check king c7 and king d4 and uh, lila's king is also ready to get into black's position and make a difference we have knight b7 and now rook to g6 hitting this pawn and allowing maybe harry to go up the board but now instead of taking a5 we have knight d8 and of course now taking this pawn would run into this fork which is not good for white so instead we have king e3 but now the knight goes to f7 defending the pawn rook g7 and now bishop e6 defending king d4 though king b7 rook g6 now attacking the bishop bishop a2 rook f6 king a7 and here comes the e pawn now knight d8 
king c5, knight b7 check, king b4, knight back to d8, rook d6, knight f7, rook d2, bishop e6, and now rook e2. And in this position, laser continued with knight d8, and now we have king c5, and the king is ready to get in. We have here g4, but now, of course, Lila avoided the exchange, and finally, Harry is uh, free to move up the board. We have bishop g8, king d6, knight b7 check, and now king e7. And in this position, of course, black can take this pawn, but then white just plays king f8 or something, and uh, this uh, pawn moves up the board. Even bishop c4 and e6 would be winning here um, for white. But instead of knight takes on a5, we have bishop h7, and now king f6, bishop d3, rook e1, bishop a6, e6, and finally the e pawn is uh, is moving up the board, e7, and now we have bishop b5 stopping the queening square, h5, it's time for Harry, but now we have this check, king g5, and now king a6, h6, and bishop d3, and the bishop is stopping this pawn, the knight is stopping the e pawn, but after king f4, g3, and king takes on g3, Lila won another pawn, and she's getting ready now to invade with the rook and uh, take out this knight. We have king b5, king f4, bishop h7, a6 now. Lila is attacking on all fronts. We have king b6, a7, king takes on a7, and now king e5, king a6, and finally rook f1, and the rook goes in, king b5, rook f8, king c4, and now rook takes the knight, and uh, we have bishop g6, rook f8, and Lila will have soon a new queen, but not so fast, first she gives this check, and wins the bishop, and only then she gets a new queen, we have king c3, and now h7, of course Lila promotes Harry too, to a horse, and now we have king e3, g3, king f3, g4, and she wants also the g pawn, king e3, g5, king f3, and very, very carefully advances Gary up the board, we have rook g8 now, king e2, g7, king e3, rook f8, king d2, and finally a new piece promotion, and we have another knight, we have king e3 now, queen d7, and of course Lila will mate now shortly, but first she gives up the queen, and then she will probably use the knights to uh, restrict the king. No, she's giving up a knight. And then we have rook f6 and check. And now she gives up the other knight. Yes, she likes to mate with rook. And now she restricts the king. We have king up. And she likes this procedure of uh, restricting the king with the rook. And then finally the mate will come on h6. Another very very nice game by Lila here. I especially like this position which reminded me of another off zero game where she invaded with uh, both of those rooks. Of course it was a different position but still it reminded me of that game. And in the end I would like to thank to everyone who supported my channel one way or the other. Thanks to everyone who's watching my videos. Special thanks to René, Adolf, Marc, Sebastian, Todor, Radu and Guilherme. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.